Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.20 and Eagle Dynamics A10C2 Tank Killer Module. Welcome to tutorial 13, Laser Guided Bombs. Today I'm going to demonstrate dropping the GBU-12 Laser Guided Bomb from the A10C2. You can see here my absolutely ridiculous loadout. Um, this is pretty much the same kind of bomb load you would have in a World War II bomber. Um, here I have a total of 16 GBU-12. This is the 500 pound variant uh, of the laser guided bomb that the A-10 can carry. It's also capable of carrying the GBU-10, which is a 2,000 pound weapon. Uh, and it can also carry the GBU-54, which is the laser JDAM. Um, it's a 500 pound weapon, just the same as this. Um, procedure for all three, though, is basically identical. Uh, of course, the laser JDAM having the ability to hit a point based on uh, in its own internal navigation, but it can also use a laser for the terminal guidance phase. Um, but yeah, if you do use a laser with a GBU-54, the procedure will basically be the same as this. Um, here, you can see... <laughs> An absolutely ridiculous loadout, like I said. Uh, one thing to note, I've got a GBU-12 on the center line, that's uh, Pylon 6. That blocks Pylons 5 and 7, which otherwise could also carry GBU-12s. Um, so I could have actually carried one more than this if I'd wanted to. Um, and of course, I do have the um, targeting pod, which also blocks me carrying one extra. So I, I could actually carry two more than this, but um, you know, we were already being very silly, <laughs> so we're going to leave it like this. Um, as always with laser guided weapons, uh, an important thing is the laser code. So uh, before we get started, we want to make sure that everything is correct in that regard. Uh, we're going to go into the, the Dismiss and Inventory, and we can choose, well, straight away actually, we can see the laser codes for all of these weapons, even on the stat page in fact. You'll see 1688 is the default. Now, if that's what we're going to be emitting, that's fine. Um, you would want to have set these on the ground, preferably. But if you did have to change it, here's the procedure uh, to change it on the bomb. We need to go into Inventory. We can choose any of the pylons, uh, but we'll be doing them in pairs. We go into Inventory Stat, and you can see here you have Laser Code. So, just for fun, we're going to change all of them. 1655, pop that into Laser Code, and load Symmetrical. So that gets 4 and 8 done. Let's do 3 and 9. Inventory stat, 1655. In there. Uh, load symmetrical. <laughs> I've lost track of where I was there. Uh, pylon 10 is on its own, so we'll just do it on its own. 1655. Pop it in. Hit load. And then lastly, 1 and 11. 1655. In the code. Load symmetric. Back to stat. And we can confirm here, 1655 is displayed on all of the weapons. Let's go over to the targeting pod and into its control page. Nope, it's not actually here. It's in air to ground, then control page. <laughs> and you can see here that we have the L is for the laser. LSS is for the laser spot search. So we're going to enter 1655 and put it into the L. That now means the laser will emit correctly. Other option here is latch. We can have latch on or off. This means that if we tap the nose wheel steering to manually fire the laser, uh, do we have to tap and hold or do we have to tap it on, tap it off? So with latch on, it'll be a tap on, tap off. However, today I'm going to dis uh, demonstrate the use of the auto lasing. So we won't actually manually fire the laser at all. We'll hit return on here and we're back to the normal page for the TGP. So uh, let's go ahead and go into profiles. As always, an automatic profile has been created for the weapon. So let's highlight GBU-12 and activate the profile. Similarly, we could have used uh, the data management switch left and right while we have the HUD as sensor of interest. That would also allow us to cycle the profiles. I'll demonstrate that quickly just now. So we're now in weapons off and then GBU-12. So we have the GBU-12 profile, that's great. Let's view the profile and see what we've got going on here. We're doing singles nose and tail fusing, and currently the mode is in CCIP. Now, of course, for a laser-guided bomb, that's not really very conventional. Let's pop that into CCRP. That's generally what we're going to want to do, and we'll save that. 
Um, if we go into change settings inside the profile, we have a whole load of additional settings that we can change here. Most of these you're not usually going to want to fiddle with. Um, but yeah, you, you've got your uh, escape maneuver. You've got your desired time of flight. The system, if you want to be very, very accurate with a time on target, you can actually enter a desired time of flight to absolutely nail that. Um, I've not played around with this too much, but I do believe it works. Minimum altitude for things like brake axes and things like that doesn't really apply to a CCRP delivery. Then we've got laser time. Now, this, this does apply. Um, if we turn auto laser to on, it will default to a four second laser time. Now, what that means is four seconds before impact, the laser will come on. Uh, now, the documentation actually recommends an eight second laser time. So let's set that. I'm going to put eight into the scratch pad and enter it into laser time. You could enter a longer time if you want. Uh, you, you also can change the solution. Uh, I actually don't really understand what this one does, to be totally honest. Uh, and then you've got the same adjustments as before, right right and left, up and down, uh, the uh, ejection force and the, the, the rack delay. Uh, these are things you would possibly adjust in the real world, depending on your particular airframe, but it doesn't really make sense to play around with this in the sim. So we're going to hit save. Oh, and now we have laser code mismatch. I guess that reset... The laser code that I'd set. No, 1655. Oh, I never programmed number six. Well, here you go. It's fortunate that I did this because we're now demonstrating something that can happen. I missed number six. So we need to go to inventory, choose number six, and we need to set the code. It's really good that it actually warns you about this. 1655. We even get a flashing caution on the HUD. Into the laser code, load. There we go. We can go back to stats. The system is now happy. Uh, I'm going to go DMS to the left one time, and I now have my GBU-12s selected. Now, for some reason, it's not... Oh, it has two profiles. That's interesting. So you've got the singles, and then you've got the triple ejector racks. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take the singles first. That's probably the way to go here. So we now have the correct weapon selected. We can go back here. Uh, I'm going to go... Uh, data management switch up once to get waypoint one selected. That's approximately where our targets are. We're going to want to be in CCRP master mode. I've cycled to that using the master mode switch. Uh, we want to make sure that master arm is on, TGP is on, laser is armed. That's good. We have all of those. Now, looking down at the TGB on the right multifunction display, I'm going to push a coolie right long. This is now sensor of interest. We can confirm here that we do have the laser selected. If we didn't, we could press uh, data management switch to the right to cycle between the infrared pointer, both, and just laser. We want to make sure that we do in fact have the laser today. I'm going to press China hat forward long, and that will point us at our current speed, which is roughly where the targets are. China hat forward short will get us FOV'd in, and then uh, data management switch forward to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to choose my first victim here. Uh, target management switch forward short gets me into a point track and uh, target management switch forward long makes this my SPI and that's it. I'm now ready for my attack. So I'm going to turn towards the target and then I'm going to talk about the symbology that we have in the HUD in order to deliver this weapon. Now, with this mode, like I said, we have fully automatic lasing. So we actually just need to drop when the symbology tells us to drop. And from that point forwards, we are kind of hands off. Okay. So we have the, the bomb fall line. That's now on the HUD. All we really need to do is we need to put our pipper through the bomb fall line. I usually like to fly with the flight path marker on the horizon as well. Um, so yeah, flight path marker on the horizon, Pipper going through the bomb fall line, and we're going to wait until we get symbology. Just going to pause for one moment. One other thing to note is that with the laser guided bombs, the consent mode will always be three slash nine. So we're going to get the indicator falling down the fall line with a time in seconds on it. When it passes the, the three o'clock or the nine o'clock, uh, line on the, the Pipper, it will command the drop immediately. You don't have to be within any kind of particular level of accuracy beyond that. So we're going to continue inbound. 
As soon as we see uh, the, the time to drop indicator at the top of the HUD, we're going to push and hold the pickle. There it is. Five seconds. I'm holding my pipper. Three, two, one. Bomb is away. I'm going to turn off target and go into autopilot. And now we're going to focus our attention down on the TGP. We're going to make sure that the crosshairs remain on the target. And we're watching the L for when it will start to flash. It will do so eight seconds before impact. Laser is firing. And you, can, you this is all confirmed actually because we have AL and in the code. So automatic lasing 1655 impact. That was successful. You'll note that shortly after the predicted impact, the laser turns off. So this is quite a nice mode in which to do this. Uh, the, the whole thing is completely automatic. Of course, if we didn't have the automatic lasing, then if we look at controls, it would either be a latch on or a latched off uh, mode for the laser. Latched on, I can tap nose wheel steering. Tap nose wheel steering? It's not going to let me do it. Uh, it's flashing the A. So because this is an automatic profile, it wouldn't let me do it. Let's actually, let's go coolie hip, uh, hat aft. We've now got the HUD as the sensor of interest again. Let's go to weapons off. That should confirm to us that we're no longer an automatic laser. And I should be able to now... Ah, uh, it's not the soy. Coolie hat to the right long. It wouldn't let me do it because we're masked. Okay, let's see if we can... Oops. Let's see if we can unmask ourselves here. Okay, apparently I cannot fire the laser right now. I don't know what's going on. Do I have to have it pointed at the ground? Is that the problem? There we go. Okay, so I've tapped nose wheel steering. Apparently I do have to have it pointed at the ground. And if I tap nose wheel steering again, the laser goes off. Control page, latch on. I now have to hold down nose wheel steering. Let go, it immediately turns off. Hold, hold. Yeah, you can see how that works. So yeah, that's the that's the only alternative there. Uh, now, of course, you, you could do uh, various kinds of ripples and things like that, but with the laser-guided bombs, there's probably not too much of a point. I guess certain targets, you might want to drop a pair of 500-pound bombs, um, but beyond that, I, I can't imagine you kind of rippling off a whole load of bombs for them only to hit the exact same point. That seems a little bit unnecessary. But that's the entire procedure for dropping laser-guided bombs in the A10C2. I hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe, and I'll see you next time.